So one part of me is the ah, <laughs> the other part of me is like slasher films, like blood and gore, and I'm like it gives me. It gives me a major trip. You speak about the fact that we support and, and you know encourage nepotism, nepo babies, all the the flack that comes to us. Today, what do you have to say? I want to say, if you give us the flack, then today give us the credit. interview with Karan Johar and yes. what a thrill to have it on the streets of Toronto in the yes. middle of TIFF right, right after the sparkling success of Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It feels good. Feels good. I mean even when I came in here we came in for uh, for Kill at TIFF but when I walked in everybody was like initially chatting with me before. Of course they saw Kill about uh, Rocky and Rani and it was like so much love like I was almost shy you know when people were coming up to me and saying things. It was exhilarating. I mean it was really like, like I've actually come out of the country you know after the release of the film bang in, exactly. into Toronto and exactly. Canada and I'm like it's just crazy like the number of people like that have walked up to me and quoted lines from the film spoken about it. I was like Yay. <laughs> no, so that's what I was thinking. You were back to work after your Rocky Rani holiday that you yeah. hosted yourself. Yeah. Was that really the validation that you were desperately seeking? I mean, four months prior to the film uh, releasing, I just decided uh, that I would take time off from everything else and just be with the film. Uh, so I was meant to like host a reality show. I was meant to start Coffee with Karan a little earlier. You were meant to I, yeah, be Karan I was Jogar. meant to be what I was being, uh, which is being all over the place. Um, something I woke up with uh, made me feel very anxious that like I think I should just cut myself off from even going anywhere, being seen, interviewed, just do nothing, just get into the heartbeat of the film in its post-production stage. Um, and I really believe that that four months that gave me that focus made me kind of take the film where I needed to. But the anxiety prior to the release was that I was really seeking that validation. Um, I feel the seven years that went by uh, were too many uh, between the last release, Eh Dil Hai Mushkil and now Rocky Rani. That seven years makes you second guess yourself, right? Because so much has happened in cinema, so much happened with the COVID situation, so much happened with us as an industry, so much was said about us as an industry, so much was spoken about me in a completely negative light. It made me kind of second guess what I never should have. But it does that, right? That's what social media does. It can get to you, it can get into your bloodstream and then um, you're like, are you really the one that matters? And are you relevant enough to make this movie? Are you relevant anymore as a filmmaker? Makes you question your beliefs. Makes you shake your own foundation. It just happened to me. I was really stressed the day before. Um, and I, that night I remember being awake all night, um, staring at the ceiling, praying very hard, uh, just hoping that the film would get love. Money is a big part and component, but the love that you need as a filmmaker is far more important. Mm -hmm. um, you can't quantify the love with money. The love you know when it comes, it's so organic, you feel it. When you made a film that's loved, you'll just know it. And I wanted that feeling, I so wanted that feeling. Um, and it came, it happened over the weekend and Monday and I was like, I never want to actually be in a place where I put so much pressure on success and failure. But this particular stage of my life, I needed this validation. And I'm touching wood, knocking on wood, while I say that, bach <laughs> No, and like you said, Rocky Rani saw so much box office success, so much love from the audience. And then you come into Toronto with yeah. Kill and you screened at the Midnight Madness. Yes. And there was terrific critical acclaim yes. as well. How do you, this festival love, there's box office love, there's critics love. So how do you quantify all of this as the filmmaker that you are? I'm, you know, the thing is with Kill, people weren't, I don't think I know anything about Kill. We kept it under the wraps with a reason. Strategically, we wanted no one to know that it is the film that it is. Mm -hmm. That it's a non-stop actioner. Mm -hmm. It's a blood -a -thon on steroids. It's relentless. It's relentless. It's energized to be this non-stop action film 
which is not for the faint hearted it's a genre film watch it at your own risk because and on an empty stomach because it is going to like shake you up in many ways but that's the magic of that genre i found genre. myself literally closing my eyes physically right. closing my eyes at least thrice when you maybe close your eyes thrice i was squealing like a like a child in my seat like i i was like oh my god like you know it was relentless i love the fact that gunit had the vision to bring this film to me she's really been the spine through this film apurva and i were completely convinced when she came with nikhil bhat what a talent how amazingly he constructed this film on a moving train for 1 hour and 40 minutes with new actors and a new actor like yes and i am saying this unabashedly and unapologetically that with laksh i know a star is born because he just had that body language to hold the frame and raghav juyal how fantastic was he as an antagonist i mean i've seen him on the reality shows that he has hosted i've seen him dance he's such a terrific dancer no one will know that this this sweet smiling raghav can Aise be this aise kaun marta hai yeah literally how he says aise kaun marta hai yaar and so the thing is that he can be such so menacing you know so this film is a total like a ride that i've never been on indian cinema has never been on we've never made a genre film like no, this absolutely when i heard the ah <laughs> and cut to this i was like wait a second I was what like, so i want to tell you the feedback point that i gave the only feedback when i saw the final cut of kill i was like gunit i have one uh, recommendation she said what i said can you remove the logo of dharma can we do something else this ah is not going with kill it's not the syntax of kill it's like going to completely throw people off uh so we're hoping to do that when we release it in <laughs> india we're going to do something different with the logo it cannot be this ah it's not possible no but what you drew you to it because your you and your cinema and everything that you stand for just goes with the ah look nobody will know that i like the kind of movies you never guess from the cinema i make so the cinema i make is what i believe i can make because i'm comfortable in that space mm -hmm. i love hardcore like john wick is one of my favorite action no franchises way. love raid i've seen raid 1 and raid 2 so many times people will not associate me with that kind of cinema mm -hmm. because they think i'm this kind of person but i love the blood and gore there is one part of me and that's why this that's that what they say about gemini's right you get two for the price of one so one part of me is the ah <laughs> the other part of me is like slasher films like blood and gore and i'm like it gives me it gives me a major trip like uh, when i watch those movies so producing kill seemed very organic to me interesting and it also is a terrific show reel for lakshya who is yes. a dharma talent yeah. is it kind of sort of a way a gentle reminder to people who often tout you to be the nepo mafia Yes and it's not a gentle reminder okay, I would like face. to say it's an in your face to tell you that you criticize us for everything about our you 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 curse us you speak about the fact that we support and and you know encourage nepotism nepo babies all the the flack that comes to us today what do you have to say I want to say if you give us the flack then today give us the credit Lakshy is a rank outsider this is a very expensive film mounted entirely on him We have produced it. We have funded it. Dharma Productions funded. Sikhya is the creative force of this film. The money, the risk is all ours. We've done it without anything that we are tom toming about it. He was good for the role. He worked hard. He went through series of auditions, and that's how he got the part. So I put up a post today, and I was like, "You criticize us when we do this. How about giving us credit now? What do you have to say now? This is a new narrative." why but the thing is i strongly believe sneha that the negative tracks much more the eyeballs on the negative stories will always get much more coverage much more focus but a positive story that hey we have an outsider in dharma let's see how many people write about that you know i was just looking around while we're chatting and i was just wondering that obviously we couldn't do a chat like this in mumbai yeah. and I assume that you had a little bit more anonymity here but clearly we've gathered a bit of a crowd <laughs> but how do you enjoy just the partial anonymity that you enjoy when you come to a festival like this I mean uh it's it's lovely um firstly I have no problem with the fact that that you know you get recognized or the fact that you know you have um You, that privacy is something that perhaps is may i just say that before we started rolling there was a gentleman who had literally gone on a live stream with the phone to your face <laughs> telling all his friends that they should visit toronto because this is what you get to see no i i so i have no problem with that i don't even think it's an occupational hazard i am blessed because you know 
how many people in the world have where you know are where I, I am right now in terms of where I can touch lives, influence their decisions um, romantically, emotionally. They connect to your work through your music or your or your your scenes or your films. Um, I have no problem walking the streets and getting recognized. My problem is that. So one day I will go somewhere no one will recognize me and I want to be honest that I don't mind the hate or the love I just fear the, irrele the, the irrelevance you know um, and I'm always blessed when people come up and I, I love that if I can be like there to give them a photograph or a selfie or you know speak to their parent back home their mom I, I've done it all sometimes it's not possible when there are larger crowds but like otherwise I love it like I never say oh I'm going to a city because I don't want to be recognized no I love the fact that people know me. I love that they watch my work. Whether they love it or not, I just the fact that my work is being viewed by people, I feel blessed. So I feel like the showbiz, the cameras, none of this is something that I, um, I'm afraid of or the fact that I shy away from. I unapologetically and unabashedly love the limelight. I never shy away from it. Walking the red carpet or being recognized on the streets of a foreign land, both work for me. Love it, love it. The other thing that you've now unabashedly embraced is just your individuality and I feel that was also sort of a trickle effect of the lockdown where you just really came into your own and you yeah. did not mince words about that. I'm curious to know, Karan, how do you mute the world and just focus on what is truly you? Because I guess it's that individuality that's touching you. Look, Sneha, you know, um, vicariously, we live our lives through cinema. so. Even in Rocky Arani, the Tota Roy Chaudhary character, Alia's father in the film, and what he spoke about being laughed at as a child when he wanted to dance, um, was pretty much a section of my childhood where you know I was considered different from the other boys, uh, unusual. People used all kinds of words um, at that time that were hurtful and deeply. Um, um, they they kind of uh, made me go through beats emotionally that today. Um, you know, when I look back, I feel like it was an attempt to weaken you, you know. Um, it's very easily you can get weakened by like what people say about you. But I felt like, thank God, I have cinema where I can express myself. And today when you say I'm going through that phase of expressing my individuality, because I've gone through so much and I've realized that being myself and living in this skin and being proud of it is what really should define who I am. And I'm not here for judgment. I'm not here for what people have to say about me. I want to live the life on my own terms in the way that I I want and without like trying to cater to anybody else. And when he said in the film, hunar ka koi gender nahi hota, I believe that. I believe if tomorrow I want to dance on a stage, um, you could some will call it effeminate, some will call it a piece of art. It doesn't matter to me. I don't I'm not afraid of judgment anymore. I feel like I've I've been through the fire and now I can face on it. Now I, now the trolls don't matter to me. Now the negativity that sometimes comes your way. They say things about you, your orientation, your choices in life, what you, your sartorial choices. I'm like, I'm going to do what I do when I do. I do it with, with my belief and my faith. And I'm not, I'm going to mute it, like you said, because now I can mute it. Now I have the ability to mute it because I have the strength. You go through your own patches of mental health and you question your beliefs. But at one point of time, you have to realize that you get this opportunity once. You live your life once. And if you start succumbing to external pressures, you'll never be able to live your life the way you... And if sometimes you need external help, sometimes, you know, because we all go through traumas and mental health is a reality. And if sometimes you feel you need that help and support from professionals, I suggest and recommend that you take it. You know, because I really believe that I've been that person that has seeked help and it's made me a stronger, much more resilient person today. So yeah, um, going back to your question, mute the noise and enjoy the life that you created for yourself. You know, it takes me back to this little analysis of you by Anurag Kashyap, who happened to watch your film twice on yes. the same day. Yes. That is a big compliment in itself, where he talked about how he thinks you're one of the smartest and shrewdest producers in the world. And he feels like producer Karan is always sort of has his grip on director Karan. But for the first time, he really saw director Karan break the shackles and just really just embrace his most vulnerable self. Was that very empowering for you to do with Rocky or Rani? I think so. 
I think um, Anurag is a dear friend and I was very, very, very touched when he spoke to me on the phone. Um, I felt like we all make mainstream films with um, a lot of head and heart. Uh, heart because you can't do any creative creativity without a feeling. Head because sometimes you have to worry about the money spent equals has to equal the money earned and more because that's where in a business it's a balance of art and commerce. With Rocky Rani, I did the things that I love in cinema, but I also said things that I felt were deeply personal to me, and I let go of the fact in my head that will this resonate or will this not? I'm not sure, but I want to do this. And he's right when he said that the producer hat is a hat I never, never wore. I just wore the hat. That's my. I have a snow song, which is my ode to Yash Chopra. I have a, a red set that is my complete homage to Sanjay Leela Bansali. It's his aesthetic. We emulated it in our way. I did it unabashedly. Every, I, knowing very well that there could be somebody who say, hey, you copied Sanjay Bansali. Yes, I did. Hey, you did a Yash Chopra, homage. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to be apologetic about it because I love doing it. I love them. It's a homage. I, I paid homage to all Hindi film songs that I listen to all the time. You know, I played. I, I, I even lo used to love the Baba Siddiqui song "Aaja Meri Gadi Me Bed Ja," and I put that into the film. Like whatever I loved, I didn't care about commercial consequences as much as much as I cared about my love for Hindi cinema, the love that I that that embraced me in my childhood. When you're unapologetic and when you're in this really incredible phase, what has become non-negotiable for you? I think uh, what is non-negotiable for me is um, I'm so spoiled with actors that have truly given their heart and soul to films, given time, not worried about ins and outs. You know, I hear of like, oh, actors have this is their time. They will give you five hours, six hours, ten hours, eight hours. I hear this. I'm a filmmaker. I don't know how to operate, which is the reason I don't write ad films because I've been told ad films actors have a six hours out or eight hours out, including hair, makeup, and lunch break. And I'm like, I don't do that. I don't want to do that because I don't want to be stressed. I want to do the best. I want to make a great ad, yeah. even if it's a commercial. I need to make. I don't want like a sphere that X star or B a Y star wants to go. What is non-negotiable for me is that I don't want these restrictions. I don't want these. Um, these like I want to give 24 hours of my day and I'm not expecting everyone has a family and a home and a life I get that but I feel like when you come on set let's just smoothly just do what we have to without giving the pressure of I have to fly off and do a show somewhere or I have to go and I have to do a commercial tomorrow morning those things are not negotiable and those are things I honestly speak to actors about like look we're doing this film but let's let's have fun then we can have fun because I'm very easy on set. I'm a complete collaborator. I just want like the actor to give me their all, you know. That is the only thing that for me is not negotiable. You know, speaking of being a complete collaborator, when I was talking to Anurag, he was telling me about how he's most proud of the fact that he, today he has people, to which I interjected and said, and people have you. And I sort of feel the same way about you. You're just yaro ka yaar on everyone's yeah. speed dial. And he was talking to me about how right now in his life he feels like for a change, he would like to stop being there as much and he want people to be there for, for him. him. Does it ever get exhausting to always be there for everyone all the time? Yes, it does get. It gets uh, daunting, it gets exhausting. You feel like... Also the thing is, what I've done in time, um, which many spiritual schools teach you and many uh, meditative exercise try, that the art of detachment, you know the art, but not detachment that you're unemotionally available, but you're not affected to the extent that you would be if you were totally attached. I feel with a lot of knocks in my life with people having kind of let me down in ways, um, I have learned to accept that I don't have those expectations that I should have. So I've monitored my expectations and that has made me a much happier, calmer, more peaceful person. Um, I still want to be there for everyone whose lives have, I've touched and whose lives have touched me. But now I'm not expecting anything in return. So if I'm there for you, I'm there of my own free will. But if you won't be there at a tough time for me, it's not on you. It's fine because that's your life. And 
after I've come to that realization that I don't have those expectations, and trust me, I don't. I'm not just saying it. I've monitored them to such a deep level that now genuinely I feel free. Because now I feel like it's fine. There's a line in our Aarti, you know, that goes, Tera Tujko Arpan Kya Laage Mera in Om Jai Dakji Um I believe that. Tera Tujko Arpan Kya Laage Mera. It's like, I'm here for myself. I will still do what I need to do. But you don't have to do anything for me and I don't expect it. If you do, that's great. But if you don't, I'm still okay. All is well. This is the deepest conversation I have ever had on the streets, ever. But you know, the other thing about you is that, of course, people love you. Just look at the crowd that we have slowly but surely gathered. But people also love to hate you. There's something about it. Because I'm, it's kind of like cool to hate me. Because, you know, I'm also like pouting and preening at, at age 50 into a camera. I sometimes wear shiny clothes and walk the red carpet. Um, I'm, I'm coming across catty on a, on a chat show. I'm like laughing like a hyena sometimes can be annoying. Um, I'm everywhere. You know, you put on the TV, I'm, in, I'm endorsing a product, I'm judging a reality show, I'm hosting a talk show, I'm walking red carpets. I can be annoying. I mean, I can be annoying to people who don't know me as a human being. Uh, so it's kind of cool that you hate this person because you don't know them and you find that what the hell is going on with this person's life and and I can understand why I get the hate. To, to the haters, I just have to say that just give me the benefit of doubt. Just know that I'm as vulnerable as you are. I'm as emotionally fragile as you are. I've been, my heart has been broken in love many a time. Uh, I'm a single parent, which is a tough job. Um, I did lose my father at a young age. I work very hard still, and I really seek validation. So I'm just like anybody else. Um, and I just hope that those people who come into my life, the ones who have even hated me, give me a chance, you know, because I'm not that hateable. <laughs> like, you know, I feel there's a lot of love I have to give. What's the most misunderstood thing about being Karan Johar? Being Karan Johar. I'm misunderstood and I'm not saying this as a victim. I'm saying this as a reality. This is a fact that I've met a zillion people who've come up to me and said, oh my God, you're nothing like I imagined you to be. I'm like, but why did you imagine this? Then I'm like, okay, I guess they have a reason and there's rationale to why they have imagined me to be a certain person. Um, it's okay. It's fine. All of it is okay. Uh, I've grown, see, years, evolution, maturity. It takes you to places in your life where you understand even the dark areas of your life. And uh, you know they're dark, so you don't go there because there's always a, a, a switch that you can press and the light comes on. Uh, you don't need to follow a certain religion or a certain school of spirituality for you to find your inner light. Acknowledgement of your issues is your inner light. The first thing is to do is to acknowledge what's wrong. And when you acknowledge them, that light comes on. Karan, when did you get here? This is a side that I've never really seen you address, talk about. When did you get here? I don't think you can get here without the knocks. You know, without the... Uh, it's only when you fall, really, and there's no one to pick you up at that time. You gather your own way of rising. You know, that's rich of how you can stand on your own feet. Uh, when you don't have two shoulders to kind of pick you up, and you don't have someone to kind of physically uplift you, you find ways and tools to uplift yourself. Uh, I don't meditate. I don't chant. I'm not entirely religious. Um, I am just very inward and I've kind of always been true to myself by acknowledging the truth and the lies that surround me. I know it all and I therefore reached this place after I think going through the journey I had to. Uh, there were times that I was broken. There were times that I was like seeking repairment from others. There were times that I seeked external help. But all of it taught me so much that today I may sound like I'm all sorted, but of course nobody can completely be sorted. But now I know, I know the tools that I have that can actually fix me. I know, I know they say that success is a terrible teacher. But if there's one valuable life lesson that you learned after just the success and all the adulation that you got with your last film, what would you say it would be? The thing is, I made a mistake this time, I, um, which I never want to do. I put 
an overt emphasis on success before the release of the film. I pressured myself because I felt post seven years, I have to succeed. That's not what you should be. I did an incorrect thing and I never want to repeat that again. That's because I was coming up to seven years and after three turbulent years. So I felt I put so much fo focus on success. That I felt that if I didn't succeed, it would just make me crumble. But that is not anything. Nobody should put that kind of focus on success. Because truly, Sneha, nothing feels like success. Success is a very difficult burden to have. Um, you must treat success in the same way that you treat failure. You have to treat them in the same way because none really define you. Tomorrow, you have abundant success but poor health. What does that mean? You have abundant success and you lose a loved one. What does that mean? Why put focus on either? What is important is, are you a, contribu are you a contributor to your immediate loved ones, to those relationships that your children, your parents, your best friends, are you really there for them? That is a success story. Are, you, are they happy with your presence in their life? Do you give to those relationships that you have created for yourself, that the good Lord gave you, the universe gave you? If you are not catering to that, how are you a successful being? All the money in the bank and you have no relationships with your family and friends, that's not a success story. That's the biggest failing of anyone's life. That's my belief. And you talked about all the anxiety and the, the, the you were just a bundle of nerves before the release yeah. of the film. We spoke to you then. How does it feel to be breathing and living again? And I hear you really enjoy hotel rooms. So how yeah. are you enjoying this? Why is that first? I love it. I love I love hotel rooms. Um, I just I love hotels. I, I think I sleep the best in hotel rooms. I don't know why. It's like I think also time difference makes you cut off from your phone. And um, you just live in a better headspace when you're away. But there's no place like home and my kids are at home, so I can't wait to go back. But this is all feeling great. Toronto has been exhilarating. Kiel has been massively released. I can't wait for us to start our journey back home with it. I can't wait for everyone to see it. You've seen it. Yes. So many else yes. have seen it. I can't wait for like India to, to experience Kiel. Experience uh, Kiel, And yes. experience it, literally. It's like, like I, someone asked me to describe it. I said, it's a very, 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 very turbulent roller coaster ride. Um, but get on. But know that you're on going to go to the right stomach. on an empty stomach. Yeah. Yeah. And with Rocky and Rani, with Kill, so much to look forward to, um, so much good and great is happening that I'm just like really thrilled and happy. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I have a spring in my step now. And uh, that's always a good thing. Yeah, you know, finally, uh, Anu was literally on this bench five years ago chatting with you when yes. you guys were at Tiff last. Yes. And I remember you telling her something where you said, if I give them intensity, they may think it's frivolous because they think I'm frivolous. Five years later, do you think they'll give you a chance now? I think they gave me a chance. And they finally gave me a chance. I feel like now with Rocky or Rani, I have street cred that I never imagined I would. When I woke up Saturday morning, Friday morning actually, and I read my reviews, and I'm like, I'm going to say it. All filmmakers like good reviews. The ones who say they don't actually are just putting up a defense mechanism. I seek validation, like I said, and I got it. I was validated that morning. People give me a chance. How did it feel? I can't describe it. I still can't. I still can't get over the fact that there was abundant love that came from all quarters. Uh, from, the, from deep, cynical people that I know have never liked my work to the ones that I love and have loved me to my own like fraternity. I got so many calls from filmmakers, producers and directors and I was like, wow. Like I got like accepted. <laughs> I felt accepted. To acceptance, street cred, and a great festival. Thank, Thank you, you for talking to me. Thank you, Sneha. Thank, Thank you for inviting me. <laughs>